to Banned by PBS, Muslims Against Jihad. I'm Edie Hill. You are about to watch a documentary some powerful people in the public broadcasting system didn't want you to see. It's about the difference between moderate Muslims and the radicals who want to kill us. And it was financed with $675,000 of your money. It was part of a film project commissioned for the PBS series America at a Crossroads about the post 9-11 world. But PBS executives rejected it. They say the filmmakers' work was alarmist, overreaching, and unfair. You'll meet those filmmakers a little later. They say they were censored because of liberal bias at PBS. On a topic this important, we think you should decide. Muslims Against Jihad starts right now. Since 9-11, a struggle for control has intensified within the Muslim communities of North America and Europe. It is one that has engulfed people like Abdel Malik, a moderate Muslim who must cope with the realities of present-day France. When you say Islam terrorism, Islam terrorism, people are afraid. When they see a Muslim, they say, oh, it's a potential terrorist. So that's, that's wrong. For Abdel Malik, his life as a Muslim moderate has been made more difficult by the new and aggressive voices, the Islamists, who have gained most attention as they took to the streets, opposing the policies and sometimes even the traditions of the countries they live in. Almost lost in the din is the voice of the other Muslims, the moderates, who often live in a world of contradictions and concerns. When I open the newspaper and I look at a car bombing in uh, uh, Turkey or there was a car bombing in Spain and you think, oh my God, please don't let this be uh, somebody identified as a Muslim who did this. Scorned by the extremists within their own faith and usually ignored by the mainstream population in Europe, in Canada, in America, they struggle to make up the fabric of an open society as spiritual counselors, as teachers, mothers, students, and entertainers. This is their voice. In Western Europe, the emergence of Islam has been sometimes marked by mass peaceful rallies like this one featuring a Dane who converted to Islam. On other occasions, more aggressive groups like Hezbollah Tahrir, an avowed Islamist organization, can bring tens of thousands into the streets. It is groups like Hezbollah Tahrir who most openly condemn and sometimes threaten moderates in their own religion. In the newsrooms across Europe, coverage of the Islamic world within national borders has become a priority. In the big Danish newspaper, Politiken, an investigative unit was created specifically to look into groups like Hezbo Tahrir. Matthias Seidelin was part of that unit. Hezbo Tahrir is, a, is an international organization which has been uh, based in, mostly in, in, in London and in Denmark and some Western countries. When we talk to Hezbo Tahrir, we cannot talk to them face to face. They will only answer questions during an email interview. Well, I'm, I'm basically asking him here, why have you started to recruit members amongst criminal immigrants? And he basically answers, we try to help all Muslims that suffers from the, from the integration into the Danish society's corrupt culture and immoral values. In all Arab countries and in Pakistan, it's actually forbidden. And, um, but in, in Denmark, uh, we had an investigation into can we forbid this organization here? And the Justice Department say, no, we can't. We have a freedom of speech, so we can't do this. They have to say their opinion, and we have to accept it. But freedom of speech is routinely ignored by extremist groups like Hezbo Tahrir, who disrupt rallies of moderate Muslims. Saeed Mansour was born in Morocco, but now lives in Denmark. He has openly admitted to being part of the jihadist network in Europe and has devoted himself to creating an Islamic society in the West. We are obliged to aim for an Islamic society. It's not only what we want, it's our religion that demands we create an Islamic society. Okay. 
Three years ago, it was revealed that Saeed Mansur made frequent trips to the Copenhagen train station, where he contacted Al-Qaeda members in Spain and elsewhere in Europe, using the same payphone and talking in codes, with such terms as red sport shoes being used for false passports. He was unaware that the payphone was tapped by Danish intelligence while he was in constant contact with an extremist in London, who himself was receiving numerous phone calls from those responsible for the commuter train bombing in Madrid. Said Mansur and those in Hezbollah Tahrir have long projected almost a sense of immunity to any consequences from Western legal systems. There is one senior officer of the Danish intelligence service who said they have been tapping my phone for five years. That's not true. They have been tapping it for more than five years. I suspect they have been tapping it since I had a visit from Omar Rachman, the sheikh. Said Mansur had played host to Omar Abdul Rahman, the so-called blind sheikh, who was convicted in the first attack on the World Trade Center in 1993 and sentenced to life imprisonment. He is merely one of the major jihadists with whom Said Mansur has been closely linked. Yeah, I have supported Zarqawi in Iraq. I support Osama bin Laden and I support every Muslim fighting for the Muslim cause everywhere in the Muslim world. And whatever happens to the Americans, well, that is America's own fault. But for leaders like Saeed Mansur, there remained a publicly expressed belief that their Islamist actions and statements would continue with no problems. It's all made up, because if the Danish intelligence really did have something on me, I mean, they have been watching me for 10 years. I would be in jail or somewhere else by now. But shortly after this interview, Saeed Mansur was arrested by Danish police and for months waited to find out what the charges against him would be. In late 2006, he was formally accused of conducting terrorism-related activities. Recently, European law enforcement authorities have paid closer attention to those at the center of Hezbollah Tahrir's network in Europe. Sheikh Omar Bakri was the group's founder in Britain. So the only way you can stop us, by give up your democracy. If you give up democracy and freedom of speech and start to stop us and ban us the way you start to do, that's the way you can stop us. But that means we succeed to say to the people, you see, democracy, hypocrisy, we always said so. Well, I don't believe in democracy. Sheikh Omar Bakri has fled Britain, but is now actively involved in Islamist activities there via the internet from his new home in the Middle East. Okay, that was the first segment of Muslims Against Jihad, a film originally meant to air on PBS. It was produced by ABG Films, and we have two of the filmmakers with us here. The director and producer, Martin Burke, and via satellite, executive producer, Frank Gaffney. Now, you, the, you received a grant, and that was to make this film for public television. And what happened? We made two films actually we ended up with two for the price of one we offered them both to PBS now Frank did, this was supposed to be about moderate Muslims is that what they saw when they viewed it well I think the people that we dealt with uh, were looking at this film through a prism that I can only describe as uh, as a sort of Islamist sympathizing prism. What they saw as moderate Muslims, they seem to regard as not representative of uh, mainstream Muslims. I think it contributed to the censorship of our film. Well, I think they were a little more colorful in their description of it. Uh, Martin, they, uh, they screened it at uh, PBS and they said it is alarmist and overreaching. They said we had demonized the Islamists. PBS got increasingly hysterical as time went on. We bent over backwards to try and address their problems. All right, well, I know that there and is much eating. more to the story. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit later in the program, but just to be clear, right now, we're watching the second hour that you submitted to PBS.
It is very disturbing, and Muslims Against Jihad will resume after the break with a powerful story about Muslim women who are rebelling against a culture of arranged marriages, physical abuse, and even honor killings.